Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa from the Bolinas Library and today we're going to read a few books and sing some songs and do some activities about today and yesterday and tomorrow. What did you do yesterday? Can you remember? Hmm, did you eat anything good? Did you do anything fun or exciting or maybe something sad happened or maybe it was just kind of a normal everyday boring day? Not, not too exciting, not too bad. How about today? How's it going so far today? Is it a good day, a bad day, both? Sometimes good and bad things happen throughout the day. And we have days that do this, woo, up and down and up and down and up and down. And what about, hmm, tomorrow? Do you have any big plans for tomorrow? Do you have any things, any projects? or any games that you're thinking about playing tomorrow? What do you think? Well today, let's start off with reading a book called Tomorrow Most Likely. Words by Dave Eggers and pictures by Lane Smith with permission from Chronicle Books. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a sky and chances are it'll be blue Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a squirrel, and chances are his name is Stu. Hmm. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a meal, and chances are it will be brown. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a door that leads to the world where people are found. Tomorrow, most likely, there will come a song through the half-open window of a slow-moving car. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a plane flying high and white and fast and far. Tomorrow, most likely, something won't rhyme. Hmm. Ooh, what's that silly bird doing? Tomorrow, most likely, you'll touch a bright bug, green and red, and look at you, looking at you. <gasps> Tomorrow, most likely, the bug will seem worried. He's missing a friend. His friend's name is Stu. The bug's friend is named Stu. It's the squirrel. Most tomorrow, most likely, you'll smell the good smell of an unseen flower you can't quite name. Hmm. Tomorrow, most likely, you'll pick up a stone striped with a spider web, or maybe a brain. Hmm. Tomorrow, most likely, you'll see something strange. You'll hear something odd. You'll touch something gooey. You'll meet Cousin Todd. You might ride a whale. You could eat a cloud. You might write a song and sing it too loud. There are mountains of time and oceans of faces, canyons of colors and skies full of places. Tomorrow most likely will be a great day because you are in it. And Stu is okay. There looks looks like Bug and Stu found each other. The end. Sometimes tomorrow can feel a little scary. We don't know what's gonna happen. But sometimes tomorrow can feel very exciting. Maybe you have something you're looking forward to doing and today, oh, we wanna just fly through it because we wanna get till tomorrow. We have to be patient because we have to wait because we still have today. What are a couple things that you are looking forward to that are happening tomorrow for you? And what are some things that you're happening right now, today? Maybe in an hour or maybe in a few minutes. Maybe after you finish watching the story time you're gonna do. Maybe something that's happening right now. Let's see, what's happening right now for you? Can you look out the window and see if you can see anything happening that's very interesting. Maybe you see a little bit of wind blowing through the trees or some plants outside your window. Maybe there's some, some friends that are walking by or maybe there's some smells that are coming from your kitchen that smells so good. Maybe there's some food you're about to have. Or maybe you're in the middle of reading a book that you're excited about or a game you're playing. Maybe 
there's a song in your head that you really like that's happening right now. Or maybe it's a song you don't like so much and you just got stuck in your head. That can happen too. What else is happening for you right now? Hmm. Let's sing a song about today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Okay, you ready to sing with me? Right. Today, yesterday, and tomorrow, day by day, we work and play. Today, yesterday, and tomorrow, day by day, we say hello to the day. Today, yesterday, and tomorrow, today's name is, uh-oh, what's today for you? Today for me is Monday, but it might be a very different day for you. What's today? So I'll say today is Monday. Today is Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. Day by day we'll make it great. Day by day we'll make it great. Today is Monday. Yesterday is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Day by day, we work and play today, yesterday, and tomorrow. And maybe you're watching this on a Wednesday, or a Saturday, or a Sunday, or a Monday, or a Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday. What day is it for you today? Hmm. If you have something that you're looking forward to doing tomorrow that you know you can't do today, that might be a special trick, a good secret ingredient for you to try too. And in the meantime, we have to think of something that we're going to do today. Let's sing another song called Tick Tock Goes the Clock. And you might have noticed that in your own house, you might have a clock. This is my funny clock. And the hands on the clock go round and round and round and round and round until it gets through the day. And if we don't know what the real time is, let's make up our own time. So let's sing the song goes, that goes, tick tock goes the clock, tick tock goes the clock. I know the time it's, what time is it? It's dancing o'clock. Dance, 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 it's dancing o'clock. How about this? Tick tock, tick tock goes the clock. I know the time it's jumping o'clock. Uh-oh, you ready? Jump, 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 jump. It's jumping the clock. And then what else can we do? Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock goes the clock. I know the time. It's snacking time? Snack o'clock? Hmm. What else? Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock goes the clock. I know the time. It's twist o twisting a clock. Twist, 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 twist. It's twisting a clock. Twist, twist, twist. It's twisting a clock. How about this? Tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock goes the clock. I know the time. It's hmm. What? Clapping a clock. Clap, 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 clap. You can go around the house clapping. Yay! And everyone's going to say, why are you clapping? What are you clapping about? Just because I'm just clapping. How about this? <gasps> tick tock goes the clock. Tick tock goes the clock. I know the time. It's <gasps> sleep o'clock. <laughs> Good night. I'm done. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and see what happens. <laughs> Here's an activity that you can do at home with your family. You can make your own special clock. Here is one that I made and it's just with some paper and I used some wooden spoons for the hands. And I cut out numbers 1 through 12 and you can have a, an adult help you. And then, like a puzzle, you can try and put the numbers in order all the way around the clock. You can also make up a different kind of clock where instead of numbers you can have pictures of different things that you want to do throughout your day. So there's lots of different ways to make your own clock in your own way of telling time. And I also have another activity for us 
where we're going to make some watches. So if you have ever seen a watch before, because not a lot of people wear watches anymore when they look at clocks, they tell the time on the wall, a clock on the wall, or on their phones, but people used to wear watches, and you can make your own. You can take a, a tube, a cardboard tube, this is from a toilet paper tube, or you can just use paper too, cut out the rings, and cut out a little circle for you, the clock face, and then you can use some numbers, and tape it on, and you have your own clock. This is mine, and I made up my own time. I have book time, nap time, dance time, dessert time. Hmm, I wonder what time it is right now. Dessert time sounds pretty good to me. Hmm. Let's read another book called Five Minutes. That's a lot of time. No, it's not. Yes, it is. This book is written by Liz Garten Scallion and Audrey Vernick, illustrated by Olivier Talek, with permission from G.P. Putnam's Sons. This is another book about trying to understand how time works. And you know what? Adults are still trying to figure out how time works. It's very confusing sometimes. Five minutes is a lot of time. Do you know how long five minutes is? It sometimes can feel very long and sometimes not long at all. And he's wanting to get up. It's early in the morning, so five minutes feels like a lot of time. But not to the parents. The parents are saying, back to bed, five more minutes, please. Does that ever happen in your house? Wait, no, it's not a lot of time. We're out of here in five minutes. They're rushing. Now it feels like it's not very much time at all. That's not enough time. Actually, wait, yes, it is. It is enough time. This will just take five minutes. Five minutes is forever. Sometimes it feels like so long when you have to stay in line. Stand in line. Five minutes is an eternity. Only five minutes? Now, it's not long at all. He's looking at pets in the pet store. Five minutes is too long. <gasps> He's in line for the library. Five minutes is way too long. Now, looks like He's waiting for the adults to talk, and they're talking and talking and talking. Five minutes is too long. I'll be ready for you in five minutes in the doctor's office. Five minutes is not soon enough. Oh, we'll be done in five minutes. Oh, no. How am I supposed to wait five minutes? We'll be there in five minutes. Finally. That felt like too long. Five minutes is five minutes is five minutes. Five minutes is a lifetime. Now it feels long again. They're waiting in another line. Oh man, five minutes flies by. That went too fast once they were on the ride. Sometimes. Oh, he's got a bellyache. Please, just five more minutes. Seriously, hang on. It's already been five minutes? How did that happen so fast? Did he fall asleep in the car? Five whole minutes. I'll be ready in five minutes. This will just take five minutes. Five minutes is endless. It looks like he keeps saying five minutes over and over. Five more minutes, five more minutes. Five minutes is a waste of five minutes. Five minutes is not enough minutes. <laughs> Even five extra minutes is not long, isn't enough minutes. It's not long enough, except for sometimes when five minutes is just right, especially when it's actually 10 minutes. <gasps> now he fell asleep. The Let's sing a song next about the seasons, which is also another way to understand how time works. As the earth is moving around the sun, the seasons change. Winter, spring, summer, fall. 
Right now we are in the fall and we're approaching the winter. So let's see what happens as we rotate and we turn and we go through all the seasons. Seasons turn like a big round ball, winter, spring, summer, fall. Seasons turn like a big round ring, summer, fall, winter, spring. First comes the green buds, then comes the grass. Green leaves turn brown, then fall comes fast. The winter snows soon turn to rain. Then the green buds spring out once again. Seasons come and seasons go. Watch the green grass and the flowers grow. Winter, spring, summer, fall, and everything's growing through it all. Around and around we go. With our last book, we are going to be talking about a second, which is less than a minute. It happens very fast. And this book is called The World in a Second. And this book is written by Isabel Minos Martins, illustrated by Bernardo P. Cavallo, Carvalho, with translation from the Portuguese by Lynn Miller Lockman, and it's with permission from Enchanted Lions Books. And we're going to see all the different things that are happening all around the world in one second, all the time. Every time a second crosses the world, always running, always in a hurry, millions of things happen here, there, everywhere. A boat is surprised by a storm on the Baltic Sea. <gasps> that is happening. And at the same time, an elevator gets stuck between two floors in a New York skyscraper. And someone honks in a Mexican city. Honk, honk. On the other side of the world, a volcano rumbles and erupts. <gasps> in a darkened room, a very old woman closes her eyes to sleep. And a boy balances himself on his bicycle for the very first time. Will he fall down one second later? A package arrives at its destination. In an island barber shop, a man bids farewell to his mustache. A ball flies toward the window. A house is demolished. It takes no more than one second. A girl hurries home from school. A man sits down to rest for just one second, he tells himself. A punch springs out from someone's hand. In a Portuguese orchard, a ripe orange falls. Time seems to stop in a Moroccan village. In one second, I'll turn the page. The dogs, and only the dogs, feel a tiny tremor, a little tiny earthquake, in a Venezuelan city. And after many days, a breeze finally flutters on the high seas. Something important slips from a woman's fingers. <gasps> Just takes one second. Hmm. A watch stops at the 59th second. On the 32nd minute and the seventh hour of the day. Oh, someone's wearing a watch. A wave reaches the shore. And a book reaches the end. And the end. And here are all, and here's a map in the back of the book of all of the different things that are happening all around the world at the exact same time. Can you think? Of some things that might be happening at this very second, on this very day, right now. What do you think is happening? Hmm. Well, that's all for today. But first, before we go, I wanted to share with you a few more books that you can check out at the library on your own. 
And these books are more books that have to do with today and tomorrow and how we think about time. And they're just good books. A Day at Grandma's, written by Mie Lee. And Not Last Night, but The Night Before, written by Colin McNaughton. Let's see, what else do we have? Forever or a Day by Sarah Jacoby. A Second is a Hiccup by Hazel Hutchins. And Eric Carle's Slowly, Slowly, Slowly Said the Sloth. And this is a good book about a sloth who moves very slowly through time. And that's okay. We all move differently. Some are very fast and some are very slow. And sometimes you might be very fast and then slow at other times. And that's okay. Maybe you are running, running, running because you love to run and you're trying to get through, you're trying to do a bunch of different things at once. And then maybe you're going very slowly because you're eating a very delicious dessert and you want to savor every bite of it and you don't want it to go away. You want it to last forever. So you're eating it very slowly. Hmm. Well, those are just some suggestions. And until next time, which might not be tomorrow or the next day, but maybe it'll be the next day or the next day, we'll come together again and read some more stories and sing some songs and do some activities. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.